SEO tips for Google, how to avoid duplicate content, as well as let Google better index your website. When you log into your Google Webmaster Tools account, looking at HTML improvements, at times Google may show duplicate content issues here. If so, then it gives you details as to what those issues are, which pages, so that you can go and fix them. Google really dislikes duplicate content. Can you imagine Google indexing, you know, like double indexing the entire internet? 70, 70 trillion web documents. The <laughs> That's just not going to happen. So then it says, you know what? It's your duty as a website owner to make sure there is no duplicate content on your site. Now, most website owners, they think that just because they're using robots.txt file, they're basically telling Google not to index certain parts of their website. Perhaps it's to do with to avoid duplicate content, all this stuff. Robots.txt file is used to let Google better crawl your website. Meaning, just because you're using this file and telling Google not to crawl certain pages doesn't mean Google won't find those pages. And if it does, you've got to ask yourself, well, how can I find that out? How can I find out that if Google has indexed certain pages that it shouldn't have? And how can I fix that? Let's go find that out. I've taken sample website here. All you need to do is search Google with site operator, as in right, site, colon, and simply paste or type your domain URL here, and then search Google. This search operator tells Google, okay Google, bring me results regarding what you know about this website. That's what the site operator is all about. When you search your own website, take a note of this number here. Surely yours will be different. But what Google is saying, you know what? As far as this website is concerned, I'm aware of about 286 results. Now, results can mean many different things. It could mean normal web pages, it could mean PDF documents, it could mean Word documents, and so on. Now, looking at this number, your next step of action should be to go to the last page. Always go to the last page until Google is not willing to show you any more results. And then, compare that number, well, 10 results per page, it's gone 8 pages deep, and so on, right? In this example, it's showing us some PDF here as well. So, as you can see, there's a huge difference between the first number and what Google is showing. Make sense? That's very important then you can press on repeat the search with omitted results and then go back to the last page again in this example Google just added three more pages but it still doesn't answer the huge difference between both numbers make sense that's very important to compare when you compare that you can see in this example, it seems there is a subdomain happening for this example, and it's saying, you know what, robots or text file is telling us not to crawl that website, and yet that URL is still there. Make sense? So, robots or text file is for crawling only, so you control the crawling of Google, but not indexing. For indexing, you need to start using plugins if you're using, let's say, WordPress, 
or other content management systems they do have an option for you to start using no index index kind of business let's go and take a look at what they are if you're using WordPress this is the PHP code which I believe will actually help you for tags you shouldn't let Google index tag pages there is nothing unique on those pages date archives they are just archives so you can tell Google not to index those pages and yet follow the links on those pages your search results for WordPress search results page that's designed for your visitors user experience right so if they get lost on your website or if they want to find something they can search your website but on search results page there is nothing unique it's just taking parts from your other parts of your website so then you can use meta tags to tell Googlebot okay you know what Whenever you see this tag, do not index that web page. So this is the code that you can use for PHP. But let's say for WordPress PHP, right? Let's say you have a certain page that it's running some special campaign. So you can then use if his page special promotions page whatever your page that you don't want Google to index because it's just for perhaps a week's promotion this week's promotion then you can use this tag you see then you definitely make sure that Google doesn't see that page following different different links on your site because if it finds the links it will crawl and if it crawls and if it doesn't see no index on the pages that you don't want indexed then it's gonna put it in its result and then get confused with those numbers you see another thing that you can do is you can start utilizing canonical URLs so for static website this is the meta tag that you can use whenever you place this on any page that you don't want Google to index then it will definitely obey this rule so canonical URLs this is very important it doesn't 100% avoid duplicate content issues but it rather guides Google as to the original page the content is on meaning let's imagine that you create a page use the canonical URL which Google suggests to you to use and then let's say 100 different people start sharing that on other websites then because Google is aware of its canonical URL think of it as a birth birth place so Google is aware where that web page was born in your case it's your website and then wherever it sees that it doesn't matter it always knows and will credit you because you use canonical URLs also let's take a look at these URLs now whenever you start linking within your website or whenever you create content for others to share make sure all of your URL patterns are using one version only so stick with one version which version the version you verify with Google webmaster tools make sense that's very important because you know most people because they don't understand it they end up using different URL versions and yet looking at this example each of these URLs are different as far as Google is concerned and yet they will all point to the same part as far as when you visit your website make sense so just because you're seeing always the one version doesn't mean that's how Google is seeing it 
so that's why you have to always use just one version and stick with that always use one version at the end of the day whether you're using content management systems whether you utilize google webmaster tools whether you start using the site operator at the end of the day it is you as the website owner who needs to make sure that the web page that google sees are the web pages that you want google to see and then this site operator will should reveal to you if there is a big difference between the pages that you want google to see and what google is seeing so always compare that at the end of the day i thank you very much for learning with me if you benefited from this video session please give me a like and share this video and i'll talk with you in the next video session